So we got an article here from um, a website called Maplight. So this is a website. It's a very, very good website. And um, they, they're talking about Medicare for All. And they're talking about how there are obviously a lot of a lot of politicians, obviously a lot of donors, a lot of you know groups such as the Third Way that I was dis that we've been discussing all for this entire episode um, about how they're against that that policy. So just um, to to let you guys know, um, Maplight is a nonpartisan nonprofit research organ organization, and they reveal and track the influence of mon money in politics. So that's kind of their main, that's their main um, goal when it comes to the articles they put out and the kind of the topics they cover and stuff. So um, that's their main focus for sure. So and it's and they're, they're like I said they're a very good um, they're a very good website, a very good source for that, and you guys should definitely check it out. So let's check out this article here. Um, the title of this piece is Obama alums tell health insurance lobby Medicare for all won't, won't happen. It says the decade after the nation's biggest health insurance lobby spent more than $100 million on a campaign to defeat President Barack Obama's signature health care health care reform law, Obama's former top strategist told the organization's executives that Medicare for All likely won't pass even if Democrats control both branches of Congress. David Axrod, who served as Obama's chief campaign strategist and senior White House advisor, spoke Friday at a conference in Nashville, Tennessee, hosted by by America's Health Insurance Plans, AHIP, which is sh AHIP is short for that, um, a Washington, D.C.-based trade organization. AHIP opposes the idea of Medicare for All since it would eliminate the need for private insurance. Axelrod, now a senior uh, political commentator for CNN, acknowledged that health care costs represent, quote, an onerous burden for many families. Even so, he predicted Democrats won't approve a government-run universal health care system if they manage to defeat President Trump, President Donald Trump, and win control of the Senate in 2020. Quote, I don't think Medicare for all, certainly not at this stage. I don't think there's a consensus, he said. Even if there were a Democratic president, frankly, even if there were a Democratic Senate and a Democratic House, I don't think the Bernie Sanders version of Medicare for all is going to be implemented. So before we move, move, go on to the next part here, next sentence here, just wanted to pause it and say, Medicare for all has above a 60% approval in this country. 60%. There's even, so there's um, above 80% of Democrats, more than 80% of Democrats support um, Medicare for all. More, uh, there's, a, according to a poll, this is something that Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk has, has to, uh, mentioned multiple times, but according to at least one poll from what he's referred to, um, more than 50% of even Republicans support Medicare for all. So, 50 percent that then that's how it averages out to about 60 percent roughly we're not being obviously it's not exact but it's above it, it's just above 60 i think it's like 61 percent or something of, of people in this country support they support medicare for all 80 percent of democrats over 50 percent of republicans so david axelrod is doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about he's obviously misinformed and he's obviously um um he's just pushing for whatever the a hip wants for whatever the whatever the you know health insurance lobby wants obviously so let's move on let's continue on here it says between 2009 and 2010 AHIP quietly funneled more than a hundred million dollars to the u.s chamber of commerce to defeat the affordable care act although the bill passed democrats ultimately scrapped the idea of a public option or a government health insurance plan that had been sought by progressives Healthcare costs have continued to spiral and have more than tripled over the last 20 years. In 2017, roughly $3.5 trillion, or almost $1 of every $5 spent in the U.S., went to healthcare. An April poll by the Kaiser Family Foundation shows more than 50% of Americans favor a national healthcare, healthcare program, although that support softens if the possibility of private health insurance plans is removed. This is um, Axelrod said that Medicare for all has become, has quote, become a phrase as much as anything else. 
He suggested that some Democratic presidential candidates may not want to go as far as Senator Bernie Sanders, a Vermont independent credited with sparking support for Medicare for All during his 2016 presidential campaign, and might support more limited reforms like a public option or allowing some people under the age of 65 to buy into Medicare. Quoting Axelrod again, it says Americans don't generally want to destroy the private healthcare system. They want to strengthen it and they think maybe they can augment it. They want options and they mostly want to bring down costs. Yeah, but the only way you strengthen the healthcare system is that you get Medicare for all. How else are you going to um, strengthen the system if it's just going to be what you're going to add a public option and you're not going to get rid of private insurance? And then you're going to keep forcing companies, employers, I mean, employers to pay for people's health care in their, that, that, you know, that work for their company. So that costs them more money, whereas Medicare for all does not cost them money. It, it costs people less. It brings down the cost. And you're talking about, what is it? He says, and they mostly want to bring down, down costs. That's what he's saying that uh, Americans want. Yeah, Medicare for all brings down costs. You look at any other industrialized industrialized nation in the in the in the world; they all have lower costs when they have the government run healthcare, which is similar to Medicare for all, single payer, universal healthcare, that kind of whatever derivative of the word you want, you know, of the term or label or word you want to use. So when Axelrod talks about how it's just become a phrase as much as anything else, that's not true. It's a real thing. It's not just a phrase. It's not we're just. It's not like we're just throwing it out there and saying, "Well, this is what we want." Just, we just want Medicare for all because it sounds nice. No, we want Medicare for all because Medicare is popular. I don't know the specific poll number for how for how popular Medicare is, but Medicare for people that are that are, you know, getting Medicare. So they're 65 and older, and then obviously they're you know retired and everything. They're receiving Medicare. It's very very popular. So what the fuck are you talking about? What are you What are you talking about? How it's just much, much as, as much of a phrase as anything else. Okay, so if you're using that logic, yeah, you're just saying, oh yeah, just healthcare for all. It's just a phrase. Just everybody gets healthcare. You know, you know, just like Oprah Winfrey used to do on your show. You get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're specifically talking about how Medicare for so Medicare is a great policy for people that are 65 and older that are receiving. You know, people that are retired that are receiving it. Let alone Social Security and all those other things. But they're receiving Medicare, and it's a great. Um, it's it's a great program, and then we want to make it something for all Americans. So what's I don't understand the problem with that. And then you know, and then people want to talk about how it's really expensive and it's going to cost a lot of money. No, the the amount of money that we're spending right now on Medicare is forty eight. We're spending forty eight um, billion dollars per year for Medicare. I'm sorry for for um, for just our regular healthcare system that we have right now. Forty forty eight billion dollars. So. So how much would it cost if we had if so if we spent so if let's say we so going from that trans, let's just, let's just say we transitioned from the current healthcare system that we have right now where we are spending forty eight billion dollars a year if we transferred over you know kind of uh, not transfer over but you know kind of moved over on into the Medicare for all system you know universal healthcare single payer whatever you want to call it if we tra if we went over to that it would become thirty two billion dollars a year. And that's how that's how much Medicare for all has. That's how much Medicare for all costs. They actually did a uh, a conservative group. Actually, I think it was a Koch funded group, a libertarian organization. I forgot exactly which one it was, but they did a study. It was you know they did a study and they found out that that Medicare for all is going to cost thirty two million dollars, and they did that as of like oh my god thirty two billion dollars. <gasps> that's so much. We can't we can't afford that. $32 billion uh, you know, a year is way too much money, and this is how it is, and Bernie Sanders is a fraud, and he wants to you know, cost us tons of money, blah, blah, blah. It turns out that's $16 billion cheaper than the current system that we have. So you convert $32 billion to $48 billion per year. So, I mean, obviously, but obviously they ignore that. They don't. They don't focus on the, on the forty eight the forty eight billion dollars that were already, that were already that's already that it already costs right now. So they just want to talk about their thirty two billion. And it was like, hey, look at that. Just focus on that. That's the horrible number right there. Can't have that. Can't have that number. We can't be spending that amount of money. But, you know, ignore what we're spending right now. And as usual, that's what they do. They just cherry pick and they focus on certain things that's gonna certain talking points and certain numbers that's gonna make them that's gonna you know make their arguments for them. So 
Um, continuing on with the article here, it says, the AHIP conference um, featured a slew of other Obama officials, including Andy Slavitt, who led the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, former Surgeon General Vivek Murthy, Sam Cass, the former um, White House chef and nutrition advisor, Kavita Patel, who served as a policy aide in the Obama uh, White House. Um, Patel, currently Brookings Institution non-resident fellow and vice president at the Johns Hopkins Health System, harshly criticized Medicare for All. Quote, people who are very serious about health, uh, health policy on either side of the fence know this is not reality, she said. She suggested that Democratic um, presidential candidates' support for Medicare, for Medicare for All is just... Um, it is all just campaign talk. You don't see House Speaker Nancy Pelosi out there stumping for this, she said. I think it's because she knows while there is some incremental gain in, six, in access, the cost will be dramatic and that could lead to a decrease in access over time, potentially. So again, $32 billion a year for Medicare for All. We're currently paying $48 billion. That is, a, that is an undeniable fact. Even right-wingers are going as far as making that argument as far as the $32 billion that, that Medicare for all costs. And listen, man, you, you don't, 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 obviously don't take anything these people say seriously. These people are all frauds. They don't want to, they don't want people to be, to become prosperous in any way. You know what I mean? These, they don't care about, they don't care about people improving healthcare for anybody. They don't care about making sure that people's lives are improved, improving their their quality of life, making sure they, you know, they can get decent affordable health care. They just want to do what they know that their donors want in regards to the politicians and in, in regards to the different organizations even when you're talking about the Brookings Institution that one of the you know, one of the former Obama officials works for. When you're talking about somebody like David Axelrod, who, you know, has a cushy job at CNN, and I think he has like a podcast or something, on some podcast somewhere um, that he does or something. Um, he, like that guy is living a good life. He doesn't have to worry about, he doesn't have to worry about any issues for himself regarding healthcare. He's okay. He's perfectly fine. He's covered. His life is wonderful. His family's life is wonderful. His grandchildren's life is wonderful. You know, his 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 own children, they're 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 gonna be perfectly fine. They have nothing to worry about. So when David Axelrod tells you about how we should do things every we should do everything incrementally, he's talking about it because he's talking about it like that because he doesn't want anything to change because everything is going wonderful wonderfully for him. So he's worried that if you know that if we somehow manage to change the system and and, and improve it, it might not be great for him. So he wants everything to stay the same so that God forbid, things aren't going to be the same for him, that, oh my God, you know, everybody else is going to somehow, you know, they're going to become, you know, their life, their quality of life is going to improve somehow. We can't have that because we need to make sure that David Axelrod and, you know, all these other former, former, yeah, former Obama, Obama administration officials, their lives are better. They want to make sure they're okay because those, those people are the ones that we have to worry about more. We have to worry about, you know, all the different, you know all the 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 different politicians who you know they're gonna you know they can't have their um you know they can't have their lives changing in any way because they you know they they're also you know well obviously when you're like a politician you're, you're in congress and stuff you end up getting so when you're a member of congress you you get health care you get government run health care it's very convenient, right? They talk. They get government-run healthcare. They don't want to get it for the rest of us. So that kind of <laughs> works in conjunction with my point about how they don't want to change anything because it's going to make things harder for them. But um, even when they're gone from Congress, a lot of these members of Congress, Senate, and President, and stuff like that, you know, all these different politicians, when they, um, you know, leave 
office and they leave, you know, Washington DC and they just go back to their regular lives, they end up having the same, uh, they end up maintaining that same level, you know, level, you know, kind of level of living standards as far as when it comes to healthcare, at least. Um, they, they receive the same income and everything too. But when it comes to healthcare, they still receive that same government run healthcare. They still receive all the benefits. You know, they still receive the same kind of retirement. So they don't have to worry about anything happening, anything changing in their lives. Of course, of course, if we end up changing things the way we want to change them, you know, with Medicare for all and, you know, with all the other progressive populist policies that we want, like, you know, you know, regulating Wall Street and, you know, not bailing out big banks, you know, too big to fail big banks and stuff. So, yeah, it's it's I mean, these people, they're scared of change. And these are the same people that worked on a campaign that said change we can believe in which is what was obviously Barack Obama's slogan. But then what, so uh, what is it? All of a sudden you don't believe in change anymore? Obviously you never really believed in it. But I mean, you were pushing the slogan of change we could believe in, but then what did you change? You didn't change anything. You just gave us loose change. That's it. The only kind of change we got was loose change and pocket change, whatever you want to refer to it as. But you, we didn't get real change. So when these people go out there and they talk about how you know, they're in favor of change, but then like, oh, we just need gradual pragmatic change. We just need things to ch change slowly. In reality, that doesn't, they don't really want anything to change. Nothing's actually going to change. It's just talking. It's just words. So, you know, when you're talking about change we can believe in, those are the real things that is is just a phrase. When, you know, David Axelrod is referring to Medicare as just a phrase and that's all it is. No, what a fr the, fr the actual phrase is the stupid slogans that you assholes um, create and put out for your candidates that you, you know, used to work for, the candidates that you support. Those are what, those are what are phrases. Those are slogans. Those are platitudes. Those are cliches. Those are, don't, actually involve policies. When we say Medicare for all, we are referring to actual policies. We're referring to actual things that we believe in and actual things that we want the American people to have because we know that it's going to be good for the country. And as much as you don't want it, that doesn't really matter. We don't give a shit what we what you want because you're not you don't represent all Americans. You don't even represent one percent of Americans. You represent the people that are the super rich and the rest of the 99, 90, maybe you represent one percent. We'll give you that. Okay. Maybe you represent 1% of people, 1% of the assholes out there who are super rich and want to help screw over everybody else. But at the end of the day, 98, 99% of the Americans in this country, those are the people that really want change. Those are the really the people that don't want to get screwed over anymore. Whether they're on the right, whether they're on the left, libertarian, progressive, you know, you know, whatever they are. It's far right, far left. They want change in many different ways. But the change that I believe, and many progressives like myself believe that we need, is the change of the healthcare system. And that is the thing that we're going to be fighting for the most because people like myself, millennials like myself, are the ones that are going to have to endure this system. So this current system that's screwing over people, already screwing over people, it's only going to get worse. So we're going to have to endure that you know, 50 years from now, 40 years from now, all these decades, decades and decades down the line, we're going to be the ones who are going to have to put up with it, let alone climate change, let alone, you know, um, you know, the the extraction of money from the, you know, from big corporations to the political system. These are all things that we have to inherit, you know? So give us a fucking break, man. Get, get the fuck out of the way and let us take the, to, you know, take the ship. We're going to take the wheel and we're going to handle things from now on.